Mike Bicelli here. For this lesson, I'm going to talk about Can't Buy Me Love, as recorded by the Beatles on January 29th, 1964. Earlier in January of 64, the Beatles were in Paris uh, doing, I think it was 18 dates at the Olympia Theater in Paris, and they were doing like two to three gigs a day. The Olympia Theater holds about 2,500 to 3,000 uh, uh, people, so uh, you see there was a great demand for the, for the Beatles to be playing in Paris. And uh, it's a fantastic theater, which I actually got to play, play at uh, about 10 years ago with pop, uh, French pop star Jean Moss. And uh, we had Prince's sound man on that tour. He liked guitar, so every concert he had the guitar on so loud, which was so cool. But uh, in the afternoon of our uh, sound check, I stood on the stage where the Beatles played after sound check by myself and played Beatles songs for about an hour. So much fun. And in the dressing room at the Olympia, there's just, you know, fabulous pictures of the Beatles in the dressing room, blah, blah, blah. Well, anyhow, um, the Beatles were staying at the George Five or the George V Hotel, and uh, Paul wrote uh, Can't Buy Me Love on an upright piano that they brought in uh, there at the hotel. They were all writing songs for uh, their upcoming movie, Hard Day's Night. Um, on January 29th, they were scheduled to go into uh, EMI's uh, Paith Marconi uh, studio in Paris, and they were to sing the German uh, versions of... Uh, of uh, I Want to Hold Your Hand and She Loves You, which in my humble opinion is uh, one of the biggest Beatles mistake. But apparently, I think their manager and George Martin thought it was necessary in order to sell records in Germany. Whew, they were wrong. Anyhow, at that session they had an hour left after they got done doing those overdubs and uh, they wanted to record a song and they knew Can't Buy Me Love, they had rehearsed it. So they went in and in one hour and four takes, they got Can't Buy Me Love down pat. Um, they sang and played live. Uh, George did a solo there, but they later didn't like the solo and they wanted him to do it over again sometime. So that's the only session that they ever did outside of London, by the way. Um, then I think it's February 25th, they were back in the studio, geez, after they conquered America. <laughs> they're back in the studio in London and Paul double tracks his vocals for Can't Buy Me Love and George redoes redoes, redoes, redid <laughs> his, his solo. And this solo was worked out. It was on Paul's insistence that uh, George works out the solo. And you can could, you could see there's a little Paul influence, but uh, Paul didn't want improvised solos anymore. And it was, it was a, probably a wise idea because George plays a fantastic solo. Um, there's a little bleed when you listen to the record, though. You can hear a little bleed uh, from the first solo that he did in Paris, and it's 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 kind of kind of nice to hear that actually. And I think when I do my cover version, I'll stick the bleed in because I'm that kind of wackadoodle. <laughs> so they did the mixes, and the, and the, you know the, the the mono 45 mix is is, is really great, and it, it you know it features um, it features John's acoustic guitar work. He's just driving the song, and uh, George plays like a 12-string Rickenbacker on the chorus, or you might call it the bridge, and then he plays his country gentleman six-string on, uh, on the solo. So there's, there's Paul on his Hofner bass, and John Rhythm on the J160E, then there's the Rickenbacker 12-string, and a six-string Gretsch on this record. So, amazing. Now, when they went to do the stereo mix, I guess transferring the tape from uh, Paris to uh, London, there was a little crease in it, so there was a little high end missing from the hi-hat on a few bars. And engineer Norman Smith, who was also a drummer, went down and he, he played, he overdid a, a hi-hat for a few, few measures uh, on the song. And uh, they were mixing from two track to two track to get the stereo, stereo mix, or bouncing, I should say, from two track to two track. And uh, you can't tell what he did, he did such a great job. Now in the film, there's another mix. If you watch A Hard Day's Night, there's a mix where George is also playing electric guitar on it, and it's kind of quirky and, uh, and odd, actually, and uh, uh, I kind of understand why they didn't use that on the, on the mono mix and the, the 45. Uh, how about the B-side of, of Can't Buy Me Love? It was, you can't do that. Wow, what a record, huh? And, and that, that 45 sold over a million copies the day it was released, pre-orders, and I think over two million internationally. Uh, it was released on, I think it was March 16th, 1964. So, Can't Buy Me Love, what a great song. Uh, that's the backstory, so let's get started. John Lennon is playing his trusty Gibson J160E on Can't Buy Me Love, and without his part, the song just wouldn't be the same. He has such a great driving way to move a tune. 
and uh, Can't Buy Me Love is no exception. All right, to play the intro, you'll need these chords. You'll need an E minor, an A minor, a D minor, voiced like this, and an open G like this. Now when you see John play the song live, he plays a, a, a G6 up here. And he also uses that chord at the end, but if you listen to the record, you can hear on the verses, on the intros, uh, he's doing an open jangly G. Okay, now the rhythm, in order to learn this rhythm correctly, uh, I think first you should think just all quarter notes, like just... Because that's almost how it feels that he's pushing the song. But he's, he's, he's actually playing, he starts, there's a quarter note and then there's six eighth notes. But it's where the accents are that really make this, this, uh, this rhythm part come alive. The accent is on beat two and on and four, and four and. It's a stronger accent on beat two. So if I did it slowly, it's one. Get it? So it's one, two, and three, and four, and. And he always really uh, is very playful with that last eighth note of, of, of a measure. It's like this. So up to speed it'd be one, two, three, four. Now, what I advise anyone that's watching this, and if you're a new, new uh, guitar player, get yourself a metronome. One of the best inventions ever. You know, the tempo is probably around 180, so if we listen to 180, all right. But in order to get that right, you should really take it all the way, take it down to half, and I still do this. I still practice with the metronome to, to this day. Take it down, there's 96, and listen to 96, and play it like that. Once you get that, you know, increase it a little bit until you can get to the proper tempo. Like, here's how it sounds at 144. That's really the only way to get the feel of a song, you know, correctly, and um, that that's very helpful. Still, like I said, I still do that all the time. Okay, now during the verses, you'll need some new chords. You'll need a C7, looks like this. You'll need an F7, and you'll need a G7. The song structure is basically like a 12-bar blues, but um, they stop on the 10th uh, measure, and then they repeat that 4 chord, which is an F7. So it's kind of odd. But um, again, it's just chugging along. John is chugging along wonderfully, and, and he's accenting 2 and 4 now. Just straight 8th notes with accents on 2 and 4. So again, when you're first learning a song like this, I say just, just play quarter notes and accent on 2 and 4, like... Right? Just get chord notes, e even 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 slower, of course. Um, and, and and you know, it, it's not kind of like a you know. It's almost uh, I don't know, like four strings and then four strings on the one and six strings on the uh, on the uh, uh, two and four. It's very loose, so you have to make sure at, at the right tempo that you can play it, you know, in time and with the right feel. Of just quarter notes because the quarter notes are driving it and then work up to the eighth notes uh, but in tempo it would be um, let's see. and G7 
just straight chord notes on the on the G7 to the F F7. Back to Strowman. New verse, right? But then on the second verse before, um, uh, or is it the third verse? Whichever verse it is before the guitar solo, they throw in an extra measure. So, you know. And then the solo starts. Solo, solo chords are the same as, as a verse. And the only difference in John's uh, part is that uh, when they repeat the Can't Buy Me Love a couple times at the very end, you know. Um, He goes up to there, to that G6, and then he plays C7 at the end. And then the last thing is... Very John. Now, I have the charts and tabs available for you, which, which, which shows exactly the rhythm and the accents. But again, when you're playing the song, the whole trick is to play it loose with a cool, moving, driving feel. And you know, it's, it's uh, easier said than done. It takes some work. So work on it and then you'll play Can't Buy Me Love, just like John Lennon. George Harrison plays his Rickenbacker 360 12 on Can't Buy Me Love. And it's a very simple part. You'll need these chords, an E minor, an A minor, D minor, voice like this, and a G6. Now he plays on the intro and he plays on the choruses uh, in between the verses, but he doesn't play on the verse on the 12 string. But uh, his part is pretty much the same. It's a dotted quarter note and then an eighth note tied to a half note. So from the beginning it's like one, two, three, four. That's it, and then the verse happens. Um, at the choruses, in between the verses, when they go to the C7, he lays out. So, uh, you know, can't find me? It's like, they play C7, he doesn't play, and then back to E minor. <laughs> That's it. Um, he switches to his uh, overdubbed um, six string for the solo, which I'll talk about in the middle. And then again, of course, same way, just playing on the, uh, you know, he plays C7, he doesn't play, and again. Last verse, and then on the very end, um, it, he doubles up on the E minor to A minor, so. And he plays a straight C chord at the very end. You really only hear the E and the uh, uh, C of the top two strings. That's all you hear on, on the record. And that's George Harrison's 12 string part for Can't Buy Me Love. George Harrison's solo in Can't Buy Me Love is very nice. Uh, I think it's one of the tastiest of, the, of his early work. Um, it's uh, you know, played on his Gretsch Country Gentleman. He overdubbed it at uh, EMI in London. And there's a little delay on it and some plate reverb, well, plus those Fairchild uh, 660s make an extra fat. But uh, it's based on a um, C pentatonic scale, which is, you know. <laughs> well, let me play it for you first. It goes like this. Get a close-up for you and I'll play it slower and that may help.
Now to note, um, you know, starts on C the tonic and you know, uh, fifth fret of the third string to the fourth and sixth of the second string. And the first bend at the sixth fret of the B string is like a three quiver, like, and then a straight bend and another quiver. And he comes down, playing three notes, hits two notes, all right? And then again, a bend. When he gets to the G of this pentatonic, he bends it a little sharp. To an F7 chord, boys well, like this, first the uh, fourth, third, and second string of the F7. Then he plays the uh, third fret and the first fret of the fifth and fourth string. Back up to the bends. Just like the, uh, you know, intro. Then the root third of the G chord slides into it. Slide down a whole step. And then a, uh, you know, perfectly C pentatonic lick. Same three notes as. Slides up. one you should get under your fingers. So uh, there's charts and tabs available if that helps you out uh, a little more at MikeBatelli.com. Download those and you'll, uh, you'll see exactly what I played. Well again for fun I put it all together in a demo so you can use it as a reference. So watch it and uh, play along with the different parts. So here we go. Can't buy me Well, I hope you enjoyed that and play along with me. Use it as a reference and you'll be able to do it just like the Beatles. If you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. And if you would, please subscribe to this channel. You'll get notices when I post a new video. So like I always say, have fun playing these songs because that's what playing the guitar should be all about. I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.